I'm going to fully explain how bank reconciliations really work in the second video of the Fun Accountants Bank Reconciliations video series. In our first bank reconciliation video, which was for beginners, there were no differences between our bank statement and the business's bank transactions entered. That was a fairly simple bank reconciliation to perform. But what do you do when they do not agree? Well, to know what to do and to understand how bank reconciliations work, we have to start at the beginning. And for me, the beginning is to be able to do an old school manual bank reconciliation. Don't fear going manual. I'm going to show you exactly what to do. I'm going to give you all the steps needed so that bank reconciliations never, ever will be a problem for you. I have a confession to make. I often go back to a manual bank reconciliation as my failsafe when all the quick reviews of my business's banking fails me to resolve incorrect bank balances. The skill of being able to do a manual bank reconciliation is the foundation to be able to fix errors and to generate accurate business reports that can be trusted. There are circumstances where you simply have no choice but to go the manual route with bank reconciliations. For instance, there is a difference in your bank reconciliation that you are unable to resolve with the normal digital solutions. The magnitude of transactions are large and you have to deal with hundreds or even thousands of transactions and you reconcile the bank on a daily basis. Bank errors are rare, but they do happen, sometimes during imports and can throw you off your game completely. The resolve is to go back to a manual bank reconciliation. In your business, there may be many similar transactions with the similar amounts occurring every day. If you lose track, the best is to go manual. An accounting software program like Sage Accounting identifies duplicate transactions and the system then asks you whether they should be kept or deleted. A manual reconciliation assists during this process. Some people work better with printed transactions and are not familiar yet with digital bank reconciliations. If all else fails, go manual as a last resort. This has worked for me on many occasions in the past. To recap quickly, what is a bank reconciliation? A bank reconciliation is the process of comparing business bank transactions entered to the corresponding bank statements transactions. According to Sage, the purpose of a bank reconciliation is to make sure the transactions entered in accounting match the transactions on your bank statement. This will ensure that your bank balance in your books is correct. Why must your bank balance be correct? Because for most businesses, the bank is where the money flow is gathered, measured and monitored. And it should be 100% accurate. If inaccurate reports are being used to make business decisions, it can have devastating consequences for that business and its stakeholders. To sum up the function of bank reconciliations in one word, it would be... Trust meaning the bank balance and its transactions can be trusted as accurate, valid and complete. What do you need 
to perform a bank reconciliation for a specific period. Well, you need the bank statement for the period that you want to reconcile, the bank transaction report, or also known a cash book, for the same period as the bank statement. Then the curveball, the previous period's bank reconciliation. I'm going to tell you why we need the previous period's bank reconciliation. If you look at my opening bank balance, Per my accounting records, you will see that the balance is an overdraft amount of 5,711.38, indicated by the negative sign, while my bank statement amount is 14,587.16. The difference between the two amounts is 20,298.54 cents. Going back to the previous bank reconciliation, you see that the balance per bank statement was 14,587.16. But there were payments made of 20,298.54 in total in the accounting books that did not reflect yet in the bank statement on the 29th July 2020. So if you deduct the 20,298.54 from the statement balance, the net amount of minus 5,711.38 is the reconciled balance agreeing with the accounting records bank balance. I'm going to tell you what I expect is going to happen here. Those outstanding payments are likely going to appear in the next period bank statement, which is going to affect bank statement balance but it will not affect the book's bank balance as it was already processed and taken into account. We will simply delete them of our list of outstanding payments. Why do I expect that to happen? We live in a fast-moving digital world where transactions are literally executed within seconds. Of course there are exceptions to the rule. especially when it comes to cross-border transactions, where transactions take longer to clear through the bank, mostly due to government regulations. The message here is to look out for and take all the reconciling transactions into account when performing a bank reconciliation. Back to our checklist of things needed. Let's find a site bank transaction report to download or print. Go to the top navigation menu bar on banking. Scroll down to reports and then select the banks and credit cards transactions on the right side of the menu. Specify the date range by selecting custom dates and then enter the starting date as well as the end date of the report. In the bank account field, select the specific bank account that you want to report from. Do not complete the category fields and leave the status on both active and inactive. Leave the transaction types as is to include all types of transactions. Lastly, click on view report. What you see here is the bank transactions captured or imported in the accounting records. To assist with the reconciling process we are going to export this report in PDF format and this is how the report looks like. We now have all the information needed to perform a bank reconciliation. Our next step is to compare each bank transaction amount from our cash book one by one with the bank statements amount to spot any differences. And here are the rules to follow. If an amount appears on your cash book and not on the bank statements, it is an outstanding payment or receipt. Outstanding payments must be deducted from the bank statement balance and outstanding receipts must be added to your bank statement balance 
for the two bank balances to reconcile. If an amount appears on your bank statement, but not on your cash book, have a look at the previous bank reconciliation, and if it doesn't appear there, it is an omission from your books. That has to be added to your cash book. If an amount is incorrect, and it is your fault, as it is highly unlikely for the bank to make transaction errors, you need to correct the amount and redo the reconciliation. To understand exactly what I've just said, follow me in this practical example. The cash book is displayed next to the bank statement. Let's start comparing transactions. My first transaction for the period is 499.82 cents and I mark it off on both reports because it agrees. Next is a receipt of 4300 which can be found at the bottom of the bank statement. The third transaction is for 90.49 which appears to be correct. I'm now going to tick off each transaction on both reports. Once I've compared all the transactions, we will look and consider the differences. I've completed marking off all the transactions in my cash book and as you can see there were no errors which I actually expected and the reason why I expected it is because I imported these bank transactions from the bank leaving very little chance of making typing errors. Again emphasizing the point of getting your books onto a cloud accounting system like Sage because it reduces time consuming manual inputs, increases accuracy and delivers quick results. There are however differences as the transactions that appear at the top of the bank statement are not reflected in my cash book. But hang on, look at the dates of those transactions. They come from a previous period. This tells me that I must look at the previous period's bank reconciliation which is now displayed on the screen next to the bank statement. Indeed, under the outstanding payments is an amount of 2500.83 which agrees with the amount in the bank statement and I can mark it off. Also the next outstanding payment of 5867.30 and 8969.84 and lastly 2960.57 I want you to now only focus on the bank statement and you will see that we have ticked off all the transactions on the bank statement. The bank statement balance is 8,103.72. We have done exactly the same with our cash book and the balance is also 8,103.72. Our accounting bank balance reconciles to the bank statement and there are no outstanding payments or receipts. In your last step, Knowing what you know now, you can finish off the bank reconciliation in Sage and generate a beautiful bank reconciliation report that you can be proud of. Let's do that, shall we? At the top, 
navigation menu bar, head over to Banking. Move down to Transactions. Move your cursor to the right to reconcile banks and credit cards and click on it. Select the bank account. Enter the period start and end date. At the statement balance, type in the bank balance per bank statement. And you can see that it agrees with the accounting balance, leaving a zero difference amount. To save this bank reconciliation statement, click on the print button and there displayed is the bank reconciliation report. It was a lot of information to take in. There are still three more videos lined up in our bank reconciliation series. Look out for them and consider subscribing to The Fun Accountant if you haven't done so yet, so that you don't miss out when we publish new content. In the future videos, among other things, we are going to do a bank reconciliation much like we have done now, but it will be a full digital bank reconciliation performed directly on the SAGE accounting system, which is much faster and easier to do than a manual reconciliation. Thanks for watching. See you soon.